Hi, it's Janice. This is a quick overview on how we're going to use the Anti-10A lab test to monitor our patients on heparin. Currently, Alameda Health System has three order sets that already use PTT to monitor patients on heparin. You can see DVT, PE, acute coronary syndrome, and clot prophylaxis for our post-surgical patients. Here's what our old order form looks like, and I'll blow that up for you. There's the sliding scale and you can see that our therapeutic PTT goal was 45 to 70 seconds. So PTT standing for activated partial thromboplastin time. Here's our new order form and the heparin sliding scale with our therapeutic anti-10A goal range of 0.3 to 0.7. Why are we switching from PTT to factor 10A? Let's quickly look at the coagulation cascade. So with the intrinsic pathway, that's activated when there's damage to the endothelium. That can be from a DVT, PE, acute coronary syndrome, sometimes infection as well. So that activates all those clotting factors, and then we use the PTT, or activated PTT, to measure how long it takes for the blood to clot. Normal range is about 30 to 40 seconds. And what does activated mean? It means that an activator has been added in the lab to speed up the clotting time so that there's a shorter reference range. And then the PTT is used to monitor the response to heparin therapy, again with our therapeutic range being 45 to 70 seconds. On the other side of the coagulation cascade is the extrinsic pathway, and when we have things like trauma, tissue factor activates factor 7. A test that we're familiar with that deals with the extrinsic pathway is the prothrombin time, or PT, and the INR as well. So back to the coagulation cascade, you can see that both the intrinsic and the extrinsic pathways meet at the common pathway where there's factor 10. As you can see in the picture on the left now, either through the intrinsic pathway or the extrinsic pathway, when blood vessels have damage, then the clotting factors are activated. They meet at the common pathway where factor 10 is, and that activates factor 10A, and then thrombin activates the formation of the platelet plug, and then eventually that leaves, leads to a fibrin clot. We use heparin therapy for clots like deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolus or acute coronary syndrome. Heparin works by inhibiting several of the clotting factors, as you can see here in the green circle, including factor 10A and also thrombin. When we draw and send an anti-10A lab on our heparinized patients, when we get the results back, what are we looking at? So the number that we get is inversely proportional to the concentration of heparin in the blood. So down at the bottom, there's a sample of blood. And in that blood, we've got activated factor 10A and heparin. The therapeutic range for the anti-10A lab is 0.3 to 0.7. If there is less circulating factor 10A, in the blood, then there's more circulating heparin, and vice versa. Why are we choosing anti-10A over PTT for monitoring our heparinized patients? In this chart, you can see the PTT results are in yellow, and these were compared to anti-10A lab results. And on the left bar, you can see that more PTT results were in the subtherapeutic range than the anti-10A. So what does this mean? It means that these patients were at risk for clots because they weren't getting enough of the heparin that they needed. On the right-hand side, you see the PTT compared to the anti-10A. And again, the PTT results, there was more patients that were measuring in the supratherapeutic range versus the anti-10A, and that meant that those patients were at risk for bleeding. Whereas the middle bar graph shows when patients PTT and anti-10A were in the therapeutic ranges that they were supposed to be for monitoring. And you can see that the anti-10A resulted in that therapeutic range more often than PTT. So comparing PTT measured patients in the subtherapeutic range and the supertherapeutic range more often and less often in the therapeutic range. Bottom line, anti-10A is more accurate at 
showing us when the patient is in the therapeutic range. So in summary, use anti-10A results to titrate your heparin drips. Remember that the range is between 0.3 and 0.7. Draw and send the anti-10A six hours after initiation of a heparin infusion or after any dosage change, and make sure to send it to the lab within one hour of drawing so that the heparin doesn't degrade the sample. Thanks for listening.